Hey guys, welcome to PB Garage. I'm Sean. Today we're going to start looking at this project that I've got right behind me here. Uh, it's something that I picked up just recently and you guys might remember that I was in the junkyard rummaging around for RX-8 motors a while back. Now we've got a car to put it in. So let's have a look at this thing. I'm sure you guys can tell from all the stickers that are on the car, but this thing was a hot boy special. Uh, I don't know if the previous owner thought he was a drifter, just wanted to look like one, or was actually doing some drifting with the car, but um, I can't wait to pull all these stickers off, kind of bring the car back to more stock, and then do some nice mods from there and make it into a, a sweet driving car. It's more about feel and enjoyment than it is about just outright power, but it should be a nice little uh, adventure, and I've never played with much uh, too many rotaries so it'll be a little bit of a learning curve there and uh, hopefully that'll be a fun aspect of it too so now it's always fun to find little tidbits of information about the previous owners this one's got an interesting uh, little setup right here we've got a license suspension notice and fines being paid in here we've got speeding uh, speeding again and this one's driving with a suspended license so I mean kind of Kind of fits the aesthetic, kind of fits what I envisioned when I saw this car in the ad. Nothing says performance driving like footwell underglow zip tied to the dash. Ooh, look out. Now I'm sure I'm gonna have the pleasure of finding a whole bunch of issues with this car as I go through it, but the biggest issue right now is obviously this one that we're looking at. I don't have a drivetrain and that's not gonna be an issue. Luckily I've been going through the junkyards as these things show up, pulling motors, pulling transmissions, all that fun stuff. So I've got a few to choose from, but I've actually got three of them. This is the one that I picked up most recently, and I'm gonna give this guy a try first. Now the car did come with three transmissions, so I'm fully stocked for transmissions. That doesn't mean obviously that they're in working condition or any good. So I've got one there, a couple more under here, you know, just transmissions and engines for days around here. Now, if that engine does end up being no good, I've got a couple of more around here somewhere. These are some 300ZX transmissions. There's a 300ZX motor. Uh, I've got a 2JZ here. None of those are gonna go into that car, by the way. They're just here for other projects. But I think, yep, here we've got another 13B MSP. Here's my third one. Hopefully I won't come down to uh, having to pick from these three motors. Hopefully that one that I've got out on the floor already will be good, but. Well, it's been a bit of a process here because I was having a hard time getting this starter to work properly. Uh, but I think everything's sorted out now. I've got the trailing plugs out of each housing. And next thing I'm gonna do is connect my compression tester. And I've got my power hooked directly to the, the starter, like I'm bypassing the solenoid. So as soon as I ground, the motor out right on that bolt. I'm gonna get some spinny action, some Doritos, and hopefully uh, results from a compression test that look okay. <laughs> now just before I put the fancy compression tester on, I thought it'd be interesting to try it out with a normal piston compression tester. So I've got this guy, uh, I've got my adapter. I've pulled the Schrader valve out of this little assembly here so that the needle doesn't stay at the highest pressure setting it should rebound every time so that guy's hooked up and then we'll give this guy a try just to see so I'm seeing as high as looks like about 70 psi um, one of the faces seems like it's a little bit lower, so we'll try that now with the uh, rotarycompressiontester.com tester. 
All right, so I'll do the same thing with this guy and we'll see what we get. So I mean, 95, 95, 65. So like, as I was seeing with the other gauge, it looks like one of the faces is a little bit lower uh, to be expected. Now this is a cold motor because obviously I can't warm it up when it's not in the car and doesn't have a cooling system, doesn't have all those things. And um, the motor's been sitting for a while so it'd be pretty dry, probably not a lot of oil in it. But, I mean, it doesn't look super terrible. Let's try that front rotor. Okay, so this is gonna be the front rotor. What have you got there? Oh yeah, 26, 54, 26. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty low. Uh... So what would you guys do? Would you run this? I'm gonna dig out those couple other motors. It's gonna take me a little bit to get them because they're kind of buried. But I'm gonna pull out those couple other motors and give them a test. Um, but I'm still curious, what would you guys do? Would you guys try to throw this thing in and see if you can make it run and see if it can work at least a little bit? Or is, are those numbers really too terrible to use? All right, so not wanting to give up too easily, I wanted to try one more thing. I figured, because this thing's been sitting out for a long time, maybe it's just really dry. So I ran a bit of engine oil into the cylinders or into the housings there, turned the, mo the motor over a few times by hand and then turned it over a few times using the uh, starter as well, just to get everything lubed right up and then we'll try it again. Okay, so this time, this is on the rear rotor, okay? And it's looking like, uh, so that's uncorrected, RPM's low. So that's 169, 123, 169, so pretty high on that. Okay. Now let's try the other one. Okay, now front rotor. So we've got corrected 98, 96, 78. Hmm, that came up quite a bit, didn't it? Just with a bit of oil in the cylinders or in the housings. So there you have it. What would you guys do? I'll ask you guys that question again. If you guys had this motor sitting around and you had a chassis ready to take a motor, would you, with those compression numbers, would you put it in and try to get it going and see if it'll work at least a little bit and then sort of plan on uh, building another motor for the future? Or would you just scrap the idea and either rebuild it right away? I'm still gonna pull the other couple of motors out and give them a test just because I'm curious to see where they're at. But if I was gonna put one in, it would probably be this one, just because I know when I took this out of the, at the junkyard that like the wiring harness was all kept in good shape and stuff like that. So. I'm tempted to put this one in, but I really want to know what you guys think, whether you would put it in with those compression numbers or not. So next upload, we'll find out what I decided to do based on you guys' comments. And um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. <laughs>